Gulfstream Guild Theater. And your host, Roger Pryor. Hi, everybody. Your neighborhood good Gulf dealer and the Gulf Oil Companies welcome you to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater. We're really happy to have you with us. And when I say us, I mean Judy Garland, Cary Grant, Mickey Rooney, and Southern, and your old favorite Oscar Bradley and his grand music. The Gulf Screen Guild Theater is an autograph hunter's paradise tonight. Practically every big star in Hollywood is sitting right here in the audience. As you know, this is the star's own show. So you see, this is really an occasion. In fact, today is full of occasions. Cary Grant has just been assigned to his new picture, The Front Page. Anne Southern has earned a vacation by finishing up 45 days of shooting on her new sequel to Maisie. And Mickey Rooney is celebrating his 18 years of regular attendance in this world. He and Judy Garland just came back from a big birthday party Louis B. Mayer gave Mickey at Malibu Beach this afternoon. Here they are now, all covered with ice cream and smiles, Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. We've danced the whole night through. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. When the band began to play, the stars were shining bright. Now the milkman's on his way. It's too late to say good night. So good morning, good morning. Sunbeams soon smile through Good morning, my darling, to you Now here we are together A couple of stale ovens Our day is done at breakfast time Started with our supper Here we are together, ah But the best of friends must party So let me sing this party song from the bottom of the old mousetrap is hearty. Good morning. It's a lovely morning. A good morning. What a wonderful day. We danced the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning to you. How do you do to see it? I say good morning. See the sun is shining. I got the morning. It's a pretty thing. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. Now, when the band began to play, the stars were shining bright. Now the milkman's on his way. It's too late to say good night. Good morning, good morning. Sunbeams will soon smile through. Good morning. I'll tell it. Good morning. Tell it, Ma. Good morning, my darling, to you. That was swell, Mickey and Judy. Really grand. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Thanks, Rog. I kind of like that tune myself. But, you know, it has no depth of perception, no intensity of feeling. I'd like to rewrite that tune. Oh, please, Mickey, not this one, too. Oh, wait a minute. What's this all about? Oh, Mickey wrote a play, and now he wants to rewrite everything. While we were at the Capitol Theater together, Mickey rewrote every song we sang. And it worked out swell, too, didn't it? It did not. Mickey, you know what happened when that fire broke out while we were singing one of your special arrangements. A fire broke out? Yes, and we were in an awful predicament. Well, how do you mean, Judy? Well, the manager told us to keep singing so the audience would remain calm, and the firemen refused to come into the theater until we stopped singing. That is a deliberate and premeditated fabrication. Oh, I think you're exaggerating a little myself, Judy. I happen to know that you and Mickey were held over. You stayed in the theater for three weeks. Well, we weren't held over. We were afraid to come out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Garland, but I find it beneath my dignity as a playwright to discuss the subject any further. Well, well, Mickey. Writing a play has certainly improved your vocabulary. You talk like a real author. Yes, sir. That's me, George Bernard Rooney. <laughs> Well, well, you better take the George Bernard away from the Rooney and stick to Mickey before someone slips you a drink of the same name. Very funny. <laughs> it so happens that I sent a copy of my play to George Bernard Shaw himself. And you ought to see the swell letter he sent me after he read it. See, Mickey, what did Mr. Shaw say about your play? Oh, wait a minute. I've got George's letter right here in my pocket somewhere. Georgie? Why, sure, we're old pals. Ah, oh, here's his letter. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Rooney. Old pals, right? Quiet. Dear Mr. Rooney, I read your play and was very happy to note that the dialogue in the first act 
has the biting sting of satire. Wow, coming from George Bernard Shaw, that's something. Gosh, Mickey, I didn't know the first act had the biting sting of satire. Oh, that's nothing, Judy. Listen to what else he says here. He says, as for the rest of your play, that stings too. <laughs> yes, sir, the story can't miss. In fact, my agent read my story while he was eating lunch, and you should have heard him rave about it. Now, wait a minute, Mickey. Is he a big agent? Is he a big agent? He was eating, wasn't he? <laughs> Why, uh, you know, Raj, he liked it so much, he said, Mickey, if I don't sell your story, I'm not an agent. I'm a big horse. Really? How did he make out? He came in third at Santa Anita. <laughs> well, maybe he didn't sell it, but I got myself another agent now anyway. Well, Mickey, what you need to put over your story is a big star. I say, I think you've got something there. Okay, I'll play in it myself. No, no, Mickey, you, you can't play in your own picture. I'd advise you to get someone for your story like, uh, well, Cary Grant's going to be here tonight. Why don't you ask him to star in it? Cary Grant? Let's see. You You mean to say that you'd rather see Cary Grant in this picture than me? Now, look here, Roger. Compare the two of us. Now, first look at Cary Grant. All right, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome, and he's a terrific actor. Now, look at me. I'm, uh... I guess you're right, Roger. <laughs> I, I mean about an author not playing in his own picture. Bring on this Cary Grant. He's my man. Uh, not right now, Mickey. It's time for Oscar Bradley to play a number. Okay, which one is Oscar Bradley? I'll ask him to hurry it up. Oh, there he is by the bandstand. You mean that, that, that little guy, that ainty weens? Mm-hmm. I'll introduce you to him. Oh, uh, Oscar. Yes, Mr. Pryor. Oscar, I want you to meet someone. Oscar Bradley, this is Mickey Rooney. Hiya, Shorty. <laughs> Shorty! Did you call me Shorty? Yes. Are you sensitive about it? Why, I've got a good mind to break you in half. Or did someone beat me to it? <laughs> be understood that anyone who puts a hand on me has to answer to my boyhood chum, John Conte. Yeah, and who does he have to answer to? Now, look here, short, blonde, and pugnacious. I can speak for myself, uh, but I won't. Oh, backing down, eh? Oh, no, because I'd much rather speak not for myself, but for one of the most important of all the people who bring you the Gulf Screen Guild program. A man, ladies and gentlemen, who lives right in your part of town. He's your local good golf dealer, and whether his name is Joe or Dick or Bill or Harry... He's mighty proud to be bringing you stars like Judy, Carrie, Mickey, and Ann. He's proud to be your host when it comes to service for your car, too. So stop where you see the Gulf orange disc. Try knock-proof Gulf Nonox gasoline and that extra-pure Gulf Pride motor oil. And pick up your free copy of the Gulf Funny Weekly. Yes, your local good golf dealer is waiting to say... Welcome, neighbors. Welcome to your neighborhood good golf station. Oscar Bradley and his orchestra play that swell number from the Wizard of Oz, Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead.
Thank you, Oscar. That was swell. And, Mickey, if you've got a copy of your story with you, you'd better get it out, because here comes Cary Grant. Hello, Kerry. Hello, Mr. Grant. Hi, Kerry, old boy. Hello, Roger. Nice being here. Haven't seen you for a long time. Thanks, Kerry. Nice seeing you, too. Uh, hi, Kerry, old kid. And Judy, how are you? I saw you in the Wizards of Oz the other day, and believe me, you were terrific. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Hi, Kerry, old pal. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, Roger, I stopped at your house on the way uh, here. Don't just mind me. I'm just waiting for cool weather. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Grant, don't you know Mickey Rooney? Why, sure, Judy. Where is me? Well, for goodness sake, is that Mickey Rooney? Oh, I thought you'd brought along one of the munchkins. <laughs> munchkin? Why, well, I'd get mad at that crack if I didn't have an ulterior motive. Why didn't you come to my party, Carrie? I had some good dances lined up oh, for you. Oh, so sorry, Mickey. You see, it was the butler's night out. I had to stay home with the maid. Oh, that's... <laughs> oh, Carrie, that's just an excuse. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't come to my party because you thought there wouldn't be enough girls there. I know you. You're girl crazy, Grant. <laughs> Look who's calling me girl crazy. Right? <laughs> oh, ho, that's very funny. Carrie Grant's girl crazy. What are you laughing at, Bradley? <laughs> Carrie Grant's girl crazy. Listen, Bradley, I happen to know they won't let you walk past the YWCA unless you're on a leash. <laughs> now, look, Carrie, I've written a great story, and all it needs is you to star in it to make it a terrific picture. What do you say? That's all any story needs to make it a terrific picture. Oh, thank you, Judy, but really, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, really, I'm not. Oh, you are, too, now. Oh, no, really, I'm not. I... <laughs> Boy, what a ham. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. It was all a mistake, Harry. I, I was thinking of a line in my picture. The chief smacks his lips. Now, don't tell it to me, Mickey. I can't act in your picture. Why don't you play in it yourself? You're a swell little actor. Oh, no, Carrie. No, I, I insist. Oh, yes, you really are, No, Mickey. no, I... I no, I Mickey, insist. you're a swell actor. Oh, look, really, I, I'm not, Carrie. <laughs> I, I, what a ham. <laughs> I know, but uh, you know how it is. An author can't play in his own picture. Just like a barber never cuts his own hair and a dentist never pulls his own teeth. Doctor never operates upon himself. Ah, oh, but you're wrong, Mickey. My Uncle Julius did all those things. No. Why, certainly, and a lot more, too. Uncle Julius lived by one rule. No matter what business he went into, he was always his own first customer. No kidding. Yes, sir. He'd still be with us now if he hadn't gone into the embalming business. <laughs> never forget it, Mickey. It happened in the window of his embalming shop while he was demonstrating an awful thing. Poor man. That uncle of yours must have been a very remarkable fellow. You know, I'd like to have seen your uncle. Well, Roger, you go down to the shop any time you like. He's still in the window. <laughs> I pass by every night, wave to him on my way home. Now, you don't really need to tell me Say, that. Say, uh, Carrie, how about but, starring in my picture? Mickey, I'm talking to Carrie. Sorry, Roger, but this is business. My picture must be produced. Now, listen here, Mickey Rooney. Daryl Rooney to you, and stand aside. I'm a very busy genius. Now, look, Carrie. Uh, uh, look, at least give this a uh, uh, chance before you turn it down. You don't know anything about the story, the music, or anything. Now, look. Yes. Look, here's a song that's in the picture. You just sing it once, and I'm sure it'll convince you. Sing a song? I haven't got a good voice. Oh, you don't need a good voice for this song. I wrote it. <laughs> but, Mickey, this is... Now, here's the situation. Your sweetheart has disappeared, and after searching for her unsuccessfully for 20 years, you sit in front of the radio that she once gave you and sing this beautiful ballad. Okay, Carrie, give it everything you've got. Please. I love to listen to my radio. Gee, how it thrills me when I hear it go. Good morning, kiddies. Throw out that bum. Take off a tube of butter, and when you've got your pan all greased and gooey. That's when I think of you. When shadows fall at the close of the day. I turn on the switch and it starts into play. Tim comes in with a jab to the head, a hook to the jaw, and a smash to the nose. Oh, this is terrible. Tell him! Tell him! Throw out that bum! Say that you love me true. I must be emphatic, don't think I'm erratic. That wonderful static, don't give me a haddock. Oh, I love those tones, dearest, although they make me feel blue. To listen to my radio. Gee, how it thrills me when I hear it go. <laughs> Someday you'll hear it too. Well, 
Well, Curry, I guess you'll play in my picture now, huh? What did you think of that song? What song? I didn't hear it. Well, let's change the subject. What's new, Roger? Oh, I don't know, Kerry. Taking up flying, you know. Oh, flying! A wonderful sport. Thrilling, eh, what? Oh, Green yes, it's stuff. wonderful <laughs> being up in the air. You know, you, you, you feel so safe above the ground, above the clouds, above the pigeons, uh, above Rooney. Above Rooney. everything. You know, yes, yesterday I was at the controls for four hours and 16 minutes, and that's plenty nerve-wracking. Four hours and 16 minutes? Yes, sir. Ask Ann Southern when she gets here. Uh, she's Mrs. Pryor, you know. You mean Ann Southern is going to be here? That vivacious, lovely creature? That charming bit of feminine pulp for you? Now, look here, Grant. You can't talk about my wife that way. Oh. You remember I'm the master of ceremonies around here. Why, here she is now, that, uh, that, uh, that vivacious, lovely creature, that charming bit of feminine pulp for two, Ann Southern. Everybody. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, honey. Oh, hello, Roger. Are you here, too? <laughs> <laughs> and Roger and I were talking about flying a plane. He said he was at the controls for four hours and 16 minutes. Yes, that's right, Carrie. But then he had to get out because somebody wanted to take the plane up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Roger. He'll never be an aviator. He simply can't stand high altitude. You know, a lot of people have that trouble. I know, I know. Has Roger got it bad? Bad? Hmm. Why, every time he steps on a thick rug, his ears pop. <laughs> Incidentally, Carrie, did uh, Roger bring one of his planes into the theater? I heard an awful racket here a couple of minutes ago. Well, no, Ann. I don't know what it could have been. A couple of minutes ago, everything was quiet. Roger was sitting over there. I was singing. There was oh, Mickey, that's maybe. what it was. Oh, I suppose you don't like my voice, huh? Do you? Well, that's beside the point. Anyway, that song Mickey Rooney wrote would make anybody's voice sound bad. You may not know it, but when I was a kid, I sang in a choir. I had the deepest voice in the bass section. Deep? Yeah, deep. My voice was so low, they used to squeeze... To squeeze... Let me go back over that. <laughs> My voice was so low, they used to squeeze a bullfrog to give me the pitch. I did it. <laughs> okay, there. Finally, you get everything. <laughs> yes, I believe that. By the way, Carrie, I know you're always on the lookout for good stories, and I've got just the picture for you. Really, Anne? Well, you know I've always respected your judgment on stories. Oh, really? <laughs> well, thanks, Carrie. This is by Mickey Rooney. I no longer respect your judgment on mm. stories. <laughs> now, wait a minute. He's a cute kid. He could be encouraged. <laughs> cute kid. Carrie, now listen to this wonderful plot he's written. It's about a doctor who gets lost in the jungle and a newspaper reporter who goes out to find him. Well, that's a nice original story. I hope I do as well with it as Spencer Tracy did. <laughs> What's the title of it? Stanislaus and Liverwurst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Wait till Mickey tells you the rest of it. Oh, Mickey. Mickey. No, no, Anne. Daryl. Oh, coming. <laughs> Mickey, I'm telling Carrie about your story. I've got to the part where the reporter, Stanislaus, goes to look for Dr. Liverworth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I remember. Uh, well, after several days of wandering through the jungle, the cannibals capture Stanislaus, but he's rescued by Tarzan's mate, who has just returned from Reno. Reno? Yes. You see, she just divorced Tarzan. Oh, fine. I suppose she got the custody of their son and four monkeys, huh? <laughs> I wanted five monkeys. I can't count. Uh, that was the only the build-up for the big scene. Now, uh, let's act it out, you know, so you can get the real idea. I've got several copies here. Carrie, you be Stanislaus, and you be Tarzan's mate, and, and Roger, there's a part of an aviator in this. So will you be the aviator? Will I? Oh, boy. Contact! Okay, now, you've all got your scripts. Now, on with the scene. Oh, Stanislaus, my darling. Oh, Tarzan's mate! <laughs> Much as I love you, I must leave you forever. Here comes my aeroplane now. Here comes my aeroplane now. Here comes Roger, my Roger, come here. <laughs> there went my aeroplane now. Well, never mind. You can get it the next time around. <laughs> Farewell, Stanislaus. Farewell, Tarzan's mate. <laughs> hey, was that my plane again, or was it just Roger expressing an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> We are alone, miles from civilization. Oh, I'll take it. Go on with the plane, Mickey. Hello? Hello, yes? Oh, what a story, Mickey. It's a, it's a real career killer, that one. I, uh, 
It isn't very pretty, is it? No, Mickey, no, it isn't. Sort of nauseating, huh? I wondered why I got sick every time I told it to anyone. I guess I'd better stick to my career as an actor, huh? Yes, I think so, I think so. Mickey, Mickey, it was MGM. They just wanted to let you know that they bought a new Andy Hardy story for you. Oh, why, that's swell. What are they going to call this one? Andy Hardy finds Stanislaus and Liverworth. <laughs> Are you all set for the question box, Roger? Yes, Johnny, in just a second. We've got something different for you, ladies and gentlemen. The question box. To find out what the stars really know about Hollywood. You round up our victims for us, will you, Johnny? Okay, Rog. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the motion picture industry isn't made up entirely of successful and glamorous stars. There are lots of old-timers who just didn't get the break. Old-timers who, because of circumstances, would find the future pretty black. But now they'll be taken care of. Because the Gulf Screen Guild Theater is a show with a purpose. Every single cent of the money that Gulf would ordinarily pay to the stars who appear in the Gulf Screen Guild Theater is given to the Motion Picture Relief Fund to build a home for those members of the motion picture industry who can't provide for themselves anymore. That's why Gulf can draw so freely on all the famous Hollywood stars and why they, in turn, are so glad to be here. What say, Roger? Well, you bet we're glad to be here. Well, thank you, Carrie. And, and now the question box. If, if, if the question is answered wrong... <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> the contestant must pay a forfeit by doing anything I ask him to. Okay, Johnny Connie, bring out the question. Box. And here it is, Roger. Thanks, John. Uh, Judy Garland, the first question is yours. I'm ready. Well, here's the question, Judy. In uh, in Mutiny on the Bounty, yes. who played the cabin boy? The cabin boy in Mutiny on the Bounty? Uh, uh -huh. Francho Tone. That's right. <laughs> oh, this game's a cinch. Okay, Carrie, you're next. Shoot the question to me, Rog, boy. Uh, da, da. <laughs> All right, here it is, Kerry. Uh, do you know who Daryl F. Zanuck is? Da well, is that the question? <laughs> no, no, the question is, what does the F stand for? What F? Daryl F. Zanuck. F, F, F. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did that F get in there? <laughs> Come on now, what so does it, the F stand for in Daryl F. Zanuck? Daryl F. Zanuck. Oh, F. Philip? No, no, no. I'll give up. I'll give up. What's the forfeit? What All right. Daryl F. Zanuck's name, middle name is Francis. And the forfeit, well, now, let me see. All right. Yeah, you you imitate Donald Duck reciting Mary Had a Little Lamb. Oh, you're kidding. No, Roger. I'm not kidding. Come on, I'll do it. Oh. Uh, um, um. Mary Well, you paid your debt to society, Carrie. And now the next question goes to Ann Southern. What famous star is married to Jane Peters? What famous star is married to Jane Peters? Mm -hmm. Now, don't tell me. Uh, Carol Lombard's name is Jane Peters. Yeah. And her husband is Clark Gable. <gasps> <sighs> well, that's right, Ann. And incidentally, Clark Gable will be here on the Gulf Screen Guild Theater next week. Uh, what am I, a stooging again for you? <laughs> And now the next question goes to Mickey Rooney. You ready, Mickey? I'm always ready, Rod. Okay, we've got a special question for you, Mickey. It comes in three parts. All right, skip the build-up and just give it to me. All right, here it is. First, in the new picture, Fifth Avenue Girl, name the girl. Ginger Rogers. Nice kid, too. Oh. <laughs> yes, Mickey, you're right on both sides. Oh, and Ginger Rogers is another star who will be on the Gulf Screen Guild Theater next week. And now, Mickey, for the second part of the question. In the picture, Boy Meets Girl, name the girl. Marie Wilson. Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, I can go on for hours. Yes, I, I guess we're underestimating you, Mickey. Anyway, here's the third part. In the picture, a hundred men and a girl. Yes. Name the hundred men. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is a frame-up. <laughs> oh, no, never mind that. Now, you have to pay a forfeit. Let me see. Uh, you must do the famous speech that Charles Lawton did in Mutiny on the Bounty as Catherine Hepburn would do it. All right, well, come on. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Christian. Oh, Mr. Christian. When I find you, I'm going to hang you on the highest yard arm of the British Street. Really, I will. Oh, and I laid a fried egg. <laughs> Judy Garland, the Gulf Quintet, Oscar Brandt and his boys, and it's God's country. Hear ye, if you're frowning and worried. Hear ye, if your life is all wrong. Stand up, this is no time for worrying Stand up and give up with a song Hi there, neighbor, going my way East or west of the link 
Yankin Highway. Hi there, Yankee. Give up with a great big thank you. You're in God's country where grass is greener, timber taller, mountains bigger and trouble smaller. Hi there, Chappy. You want to be gay and happy. You're in God's country. A hundred million rooters can't be wrong. So give a hand, give a hand, give a cheer for your land. When smiles are broader, freedom's greater. Let every man thank his own creator. Hi there, Yankee. Give up with a great big thank you. You're in God, God country. If your point of view is drab, take a quick vacation. Fill your car with good golf gas and drive around the nation. Leave your troubles all behind, dust off your machinery. Sweep those cobwebs off your mind and view the nation's scenery. Turn your faces to the east, watch the lovely sunrise. Fill your soul with morning sun. There is work that must be done. You will find it lots more fun if you stand up and sing. Let's wave that flag for Uncle Sammy. For Jessel's mother and Jolson's mammy. Why, there, Yankee, give up for the great big thank you. You're in God's country. Cake and tables on the table. Got Robert Taylor and Clarky Gable. Hi there, Yankee. Give up for the great big thank you. You're in God's country. A hundred million who just can't be wrong to give a hand. Give a smile. Give a cheer for your man. We've got garbo, lots of others. And we've got three of the four March brothers. Hi there, Yankee, give up with a great big thank you. You're in God's country. Thank you, Judy. Honey, by that was really great. I'm going right over and see that picture, Babes in Arms, in which you sing that song. And now, boys and girls, don't forget, next week on our Gulf Screen Girl Theater, we'll have Clark Gable, Ginger Rogers, Margaret Lindsay, Spencer Charters, and, of course, Oscar Bradley and his orchestra. I just want to tell you who are listening how much we appreciate you being with us tonight. You've really been a great audience. You've been swell. When we say swell, we mean you're lovely as well. When we say lovely, we mean glorious, too. We're mad about you. You're about the grandest gang that we ever knew. You've got just what it takes. And we'll admit, we get the luckiest break. Or what else could it be? When it's folks like you who listen to us, honestly, gee, but you're swell. And now, be with us again next week, won't you? Good. Until then, this is Roger Pryor saying, Good night, everybody. This is John Conti saying thank you and good night for your neighborhood good golf deal. We are grateful to MGM for Ann Southern, Judy Garland, and Mickey Rooney, and for Roger Eden's arrangement of Judy Garland's song. Miss Garland will start her new radio series for Pepsi next Tuesday over another network. God's Country and Good Morning were from the motion picture Babes in Arms. This broadcast originated in the Earl Carroll Theater, Columbia Square, Hollywood, California. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>